So, good evening. I said good evening, everyone. Do not even yet. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back from your lunch. Uh, we are going to uh, talk now a little bit about a, a message to Christian leaders. Now, um, you may sit here, you may think, okay, I, don't, I can tune out because I'm not a pastor or something, but we are all Christian leaders where we are. But uh, specifically uh, in this session, I, I do want to address pastors. And again, uh, I'm so grateful for the pastors that have invited us to, to come and to, to open your doors and for us to have the opportunity and for even myself tomorrow going to speak at uh, Pentecostal Church. We are so grateful. Before I go, um, I have, uh, I have a, a, a few points that I will bring, you know, the kind of the message that I have for Christian leaders. But I, I want to say that, um, I want to say this to all pastors, is we need each other to, to reach the LGBTQ community or those who are broken in, in our communities. We, we need to work together. And, uh, you know, uh, here we are uh, sharing our journeys uh, and what we have gone through. And so we want to come alongside you. We, we don't want to take your job. But I sometimes think about pastors, I'm like, how do you even cope? How do you even cope with the responsibility that you carry on your shoulder to lead a church and to be a pastor? It's such a tremendous job. We are aware of that and, and the cry of my heart and for this ministry is for pastors to bring us in so we can help you so that you can help others. You know, many people have said, well, now, you guys are experts. No, 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 we are not experts, but we've been there, done that. And so I can share from my experience as living and practicing a homosexual life as a former lesbian. So, so I know what I'm talking about. I've been there, you know. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, try I'm not elevating myself, but we speak from experience. The parents that share their testimonies we speak from experience, so thank you, thank you for bringing us in and making a way to, to, to bring this uh, challenging topic and so that we can help other people. So, um, just, uh, uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna go right into some of the, the points that is on this slide. So, to Christian leaders, um, here, here's what, uh, here's what I uh, want to encourage you to do. Uh, in talking about the topic of homosexuality, number one is you need to examine your own heart first and foremost. So, as we were talking this weekend about the different kinds of glasses, uh, what kind of glasses are you wearing? in regards to, you know, the LGBTQ community. So uh, if your glasses is the wrong glasses, we, last night, we ended the evening by, we, we, we talked to the Lord, we, we gave it to Him and said, God, I am wearing the wrong glasses. I'm repenting. I want to put on the Jesus glasses. So. So you need to examine your own heart first and foremost. What is in your heart towards uh, the LGBTQ community? If it's been that you've been wearing the, the wrong type of glasses, then uh, we need to humble ourselves, we need to repent, you know, and then even uh, share that publicly with your congregation. Uh, for even wrong beliefs that you've had uh, towards, uh, you know, this whole topic. Because if you do that, this will pave a way for your leadership 
uh, and as well as your congregation. Because our attitude towards the LGBTQ community will filter through the pulpit. You are going to influence people. So if you humble yourself and you repent, you know, it will affect your whole congregation if you have the wrong glasses on. And I want to thank you again for being here and, and, and your willingness. You know, I see you guys are just making notes the whole time. Thank you for, you know, and getting equipped now. I, I want to continue to encourage you. Get equipped and get educated now. Um, because this will prepare you for the Jacobs that is going to come into your office and is going to tell you, Pastor, I am gay. And then you will know what to do and what not to do. And number four is be cautious what resources you are using. There are so many resources out there. On my website, I have a few books. And you know, there are more books coming. Uh, but I will not put a book on the website unless I have read it. But you can just go to the website. There are certain resources that you uh, that, that should be safe to, to read. Number five, get your staff and your leadership team on the same page. Uh, this is the way forward. I encourage pastors to bring us in and to have, a, you know, a kind of a session just with leadership to get everybody on the same page uh, to, to move forward. Number six, you need to align with God's heart. You need to know who you are first and foremost, because remember, you carry Jesus, and, and God's presence is going with you wherever you go. Don't ever forget who you are and who you carry um, as a shepherd of your flock. I already said at number seven, in Ezekiel 34, you know, it talks about the tremendous responsibility of pastors and shepherds. Um, you know, we have to teach the truth because God is going to hold us accountable. Uh, we cannot share false grace messages. We need to share the full gospel that would challenge people to repent and to change their lifestyles. You know, uh, so often, um, I just want to go to a passage in uh, Zechariah 3, verse 10, just for a moment. That's the wrong scripture, so um, that's what happens when you uh, do a PowerPoint and notes and all at the same time, then you miss certain things. But the, what I'm trying to say is um, we, we should not become goat leaders. Goat leaders mean we go and we start to uh, share uh, messages. You know, uh, uh, if you remember what I shared earlier about uh, Canada is becoming a goat nation because we are going away from living righteous. We are accommodating culture in our church instead of taking the, the church into the world. We bring the church into our churches and we accommodate culture. That is... Uh, uh, what it means to become a goat leader because we, uh, we don't live um, according to God's ways anymore. So for you that as a pastor, you know, uh, you need to share the full gospel and not false grace messages. You carry a great responsibility and God is going to keep you responsible or accountable. Number eight, be courageous. You are so courageous that you brought us in. Don't fear man or even your financial committee. Fear God and his ways. Preach the full gospel even though it may offend people because you will offend when you share the truth. Number nine is bring ministries in uh, to your services uh, to help equip 
and be willing to do things out of the ordinary. Tomorrow, I'll be speaking at the, the Pentecostal church here in Melville, and so we are doing things a little bit out of the ordinary tomorrow. When I spoke to, the, to Pastor Doug, uh, I, I asked him, how long do you have for me to speak? He says, 20 minutes, and I said to him, sorry, then I can't come. <laughs> so we are, do we, so uh, what we suggest is that we change the order of the service on a day like that. So we come in and, you know, I'll share my testimony. We, we still will do a little bit of worship and stuff, but we change things. We, we let go of a program. I, I like to call it a program. And so we come in and we have a potluck tomorrow, you know, and then we create the safe place, almost like we are having here, you know, even in this gym, you know, uh, uh, just almost like a, a sense of family and we, we have a place where we can talk openly and honestly about a difficult uh, topic. So we recommend do things out of the ordinary. Um, that is also how we can bring this challenging topic into uh, the church to talk about it. Number 10, develop opportunities for people to share their struggles in a safe environment. Love and listen to them. Support them in a struggle while upholding biblical truth. And as I shared last night, the vision of this church, the river, is to create a, a hospital uh, to, for those who come in who are broken and to, to create a safe environment to help those who struggle. Uh, so I want to encourage you to create those opportunities in your congregation. Number 11, we have to equip and encourage church members to walk alongside those who share their struggles without expecting them to change. Sometimes people just need to know they are loved and accepted. So we need to encourage accountability into our churches that to walk with people in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their struggle, to never give up on people. Sometimes they just need to hear, know that somebody is listening to them and not judging them, but listening to them. Number 12, we need to take the lead in condemning any practices which alienate the LGBTQ community. That speaks for itself. <coughs> Number 13, uh, establish the love for God's word. If you, as the pastor, are not passionate about the Word of God, um, then I don't know how you are going to encourage your congregation or your sheep to love and to read their Bibles. I speak to so many Christians. Just a week or two ago, I had a client coming into my business and we talked about the end times and I said to her, well, well go read Matthew 24. And she said to me, well, I haven't read the Bible for like two or three years. And I'm like, we have to be in the Word. Chad's testimony talks about how his accountability partner, uh, could, you know, encouraged him to read 30 chapters of the Bible. Initially, it might be a religious act, but he has developed such a love for the Word of God because it's the Word of God that is going to change all of us. And the Word of God is also going to teach parents. This is another point that is not on the slide. Um, a parents has to get back to the basics and teach their children the Word of God so that messages they receive in schools won't confuse them. Uh, we need to encourage uh, couples, young couples and moms and dads to, to have conversations with their children. Teach them the Word of God. That they know the truth. The Bible says, teach them uh, the way that they should go and they will not depart from it when they are older. You know, uh, the, uh, we need to, to, to encourage parents to, to do that. And then our church, uh, our congregation, or people that come to our churches, they need to be familiar with what the Bible teaches about mercy, kindness, and truth. So that's part of educating your, your, uh, your uh, congregation. 
Now here's something, it might sound as if I'm contradicting myself, but uh, develop programs to help those who journey with sexual brokenness or gender dysphoria. It is time to take the church into the world. Here's a story that impacted me deeply a few years ago. Um, I read an article that was in the, the Star Phoenix about the two men uh, in my city that uh, received an award by the city that um, they are married to each other, the two men. And so what they do is they have, they have created a camp in the summer months. And what they do is they take young people who struggle with sexual identity issues and they will take them to the camp and they will laugh on them, they will listen to them, they, are, they will accept them and they will also encourage them to embrace their same-sex attractions or whatever sexual brokenness they experience and to actually affirm them and say you can live a homosexual life. When I read the article for the first time, I, I wanted to jump on my judgment wagon because we can all go there. But the moment I thought about that, I, I felt a check in my spirit and I, and I heard that uh, almost that still small voice question that came into my mind is, where is the church? Why don't we have those type of programs? And I, I call it a program. Um, this, is, this is the cry of my heart in this ministry is to start a, a, a type of a, call it a camp or something in the summer where we can take young people from our churches, take them to, to and help them walk with them and encourage them to keep their eyes on Jesus and, and to not uh, encourage them to live and practice a homosexual lifestyle. And this is where we need pastors because I don't know the youth that is sitting in your church. I don't. And, and if we don't create safe places in our churches for the youth to come out, to come to Pastor Jones and say, Pastor, I am gay. Can you see where this is all going? We need to create those places where people have, they trust you to talk about all of this. And then uh, you pick up the phone and you call Bill and you say, let's do something. You know what I'm saying? So we need each other to reach these ones that struggle at home, they don't know where to go. And uh, so uh, this is uh, something that I really pray for. This is one of the dreams that I have, part of this ministry, so we can help those young people. Here's a very important point, is we need to be consistent how we disciple and discipline. Christians who openly acknowledge they experience same-sex attractions but committed themselves to living a chaste life with Jesus as their focus, they should be eligible for any role in the church. Too often uh, we make distinction between sin in the church. We need to be consistent. doesn't matter what people uh, struggle with. You know, don't elevate the sin of living and practicing a homosexual life above that leader in your church that, you know, is sleeping with other members of the church or something like that. You know, you get what I'm saying, right? Be consistent with how we disciple and discipline. And then the last point is uh, we need to make room for stories. Weren't you encouraged by all the stories that were shared this week? And, uh, and even make room for stories of people that are still in the middle of their struggle. You know, because when we share with others how we are still struggling, there will always be people sitting there and like, oh, oh yeah, I, am, I know what they're talking about because they may be still struggling. That will encourage people to even come out and, and share uh, what they struggle with. But stories... Uh, is so important, so bring that in. Um, 
that will also help to break the silence. Um, so people share what is on their heart. Um, so we will uh, stop the video now and